Perfect. What a pain. There we go. Alright. Let's trap some stuff. See, with the arrows, it's like... I already know what to do. But, like, without the arrows, for some reason, my brain just doesn't activate it. But here we go. We're running ops... 201 right now, so this is our, our maneuver system. This is what we use in in orbit. We're gonna go time skipping. We just saw the moon fly by. Yeah, you can tell us from 2007. I mean, look at these fantastic graphics. <laughs> All right, stow KU antenna. So, yep, like I said, uh, first we need to go over here and make sure that we are in GNC. We're going to uh, spec 33. So, specking is basically anything that every computer can do. Uh, when we spec 33, we can see the rendezvous navigation antenna. We can go item two, and we can shut that down. So now we can go over here to this panel and flip the mode to off, and we can stow the little KU antenna. And that's uh, right here, this little dish. And we can just, the game's nice. It lets you cut time during stowage of things so that you don't have to wait 20,000 years. And now we can take it off the um, we can take off the star tracker by specking 22 item 9 item 10 this is used to throw radiators. Over. We and now we can still the radiators we are making the shuttle look less like a fish now and more like a shuttle there we go now that they're stowed we can enable the retention latch Backup Alright, backup flight system. So we're going to put general purpose computer 5 into standby. That's our backup flight system. We're going to enable the display there. And make sure that our boiler pressure is on. And enable rate gyro assembly and accelerometers. And then open the crossover valve. There we go. Systems management mode. Ops 202. So general purpose computer 2 runs all of the orbit and mission stuff. Ops 202 is going to be our payload bay door program. We're going to enable AC power with item 1. And close the doors. which happens very slowly, but thankfully for speed up time, we can make it look like they do in the movies. Here we go, shut down the motors, and disable AC power with item two. There we go. So to run Ops 3, which is our deorbit program, we're going to have to switch to general purpose computer four. So we're going to go GNC, and then we're gonna go GPC CRT4, execute. We need to run Ops 201 on General Purpose Computer 4. So we're taking uh, we're taking General Purpose Computer 2's initial programs and we're moving it to 4. Then we're switching Computer 3 to run, and now we can switch to Ops 301. Oop, uh, sorry, F. Oh, Alright, yeah, that is after. Yep, Ops 301, which is our deorbit and re entry maneuver coasting system. This looks a lot like Ops 2, but I promise it's not. So now we need to close the star tracking doors. And then we're basically just going to make sure that. Brake heaters are on, good. 
our digital autopilot is into primary. We're going to check to make sure that brake power is on, which it's not. We're going to check to make sure anti-skid is on and flash evap controllers are where they need to be. Freon loop mode is going to off for the time being and we're going to open up our secondary oxygen. And the last thing we need to do is uh, disable gas gen fuel pump and lube line. Uh, this is our RCS uh, fuselage controls. They're like the 16 switches in the Apollo craft on panel uh, 5. Alright, so we need to reactivate main propulsion system so that we can gimbal the engines so that they're out of the way for when the parachute deploys. So we won't enable engine power, but we will, however, enable the helium and uh, the separate pneumatics. Normally, in start, we have these six, this one, and then these six, but because there is no fuel flowing through, we need to use uh, different pneumatics that can push those engines without any uh, power running the turbochargers. Uh, so now we need to realign IMU. So spec 21, item 16. There we go. Now we need to perform gimbal check and pre-start APU. So item 34 on this front computer. You can see we're inputting here. So what item 34 is going to do is if you look down here, RCS right here, 35, 34, gimbal check, item 34. Execute. So gimbal check is running. You can see the gimbals are running through. And the star is going. And you'll know when it's done, when the star is off. There you go. And now we're going to uh, supply boiler N2 to the APU. Open the APU fuel tank valves and the control power. And make sure that APU shutdown is in inhibit. There we go. And now we're going to load Ops 302. So, General Purpose Computer 3, Program 2. There we go. That's going to run secondary values that now allow us to, to change, modify, uh, whatever we need to on here. So, to do this, uh, we're going to run Spec 50, proceed on the left keypad. And this is basically going to, um, the information is going to be different. Um, spec 51 on this keypad. And uh, spec 51 is going to allow this keypad to control deep orbit. If we did spec 51 over here, we would have to punch all of the stuff into this keypad, item 22, 27, 23. And those functions wouldn't work here. Uh, so once that's done, we can run item 44, which if you can see over here, uh, this is the um, regular deorbit display. This is the override display. Item 44 is the vent door, so we're closing the vent door for the propellant. Execute. And now we just press resume, and that's going to remove our operator override. We can start up APU-1, and you can see the pressure is, is climbing. We're going to uh, load our target burn from ground, so to do that we're going to punch in item 22, and you'll see our, our burns entered into the burn attitude, and these values have changed. As soon as we go to item 27, we can look up here, item 27 is right where is 25 26 27 maneuver so auto sequence start you can see the space shuttle will automatically start aligning itself with no hands on the keyboard you can do this manually if you want to but once that's done 
you can punch in item 23 and what item 23 is going to do is if you look item 21 22 23 is load timer execute so now the burn is in progress you can see this is our time to OMS burn and we need to make sure that our engines are arm and pressurized now we can start cutting time seeing time to apogee is counting down and we're going to burn at apogee right because we're gonna bring our lowest point in the orbit down that just makes sense once we get there, the game's going to be really nice, unlike re-entry, and it's automatically going to pause time at 15 seconds. And we can confirm execution on that. Now let's see if I can get both of these in. Yep, here we go. Here's the OMS gauges, and here is the attitude. Very hard to control, there we go. You can see OMS is fired, and our values are changing. So it's going to uh, give us a, this is our time to periapsis, this is our delta V to, um, delta V to, just basically engine cutoff, this is our, our, our time to cut off. Yep, you can pull anything you want out of here, but this is basically how the space shuttle does it. that gives you enough of an idea we can cut a little bit of time there we go just to show you our cutoff is gonna be about when the uh, about when these are zero close and now you can see our WT yep as stabilized and this is our our final orbit in in massive quotes because uh, we've just deorbited but this is final orbit information and time to free fall is counting down very slowly TFF time to free fall and we're going to disable our orbital maneuvering system And the breakers for that here. Left and right. Ops 303, maneuver to entry attitude. So Ops 303, so we're using general purpose computer 3, and we're running program 3. Uh, it's still going to have this, uh, but you'll notice some new information on our horizontal shift. And uh, as soon as time to free fall gets to zero, um, ops program three will automatically start, uh, switch over. So now we're going to take our joystick and just thread uh, the needle. One of the great things about this is that uh, you can also, in most circumstances, cut time during these small little burns. So you can just thread the T key and get really close to attitude very quickly. There you go. It is a little picky sometimes. Okay, we go 100 is where we need to be. Now we're going to start forward RCS dump. So you can see item 36 is the arm. Item 37 will dump. So item 36, item 37, and this is for forward RCS. While that's do, uh, doing its thing, we're going to start our 2 and 3 uh, APUs, and once they get up to pressure, we're going to set the main hydrogen pump uh, to normal, and they're going to build up pressure, and stabilize at 3000. Once that's done, we will enable our ascent thrust vector control, 
so that uh, the computer can manage the main engine gimbals. And then we're going to make sure that APU um, AC bus auto trip is in monitor because we don't want to trip our APU or our AC bus because of an APU trip during deorbit. orbit that would be very bad. And now we're going to do item 39, which is surface drive. It's going to check our, our, hydro, our hydraulic surfaces. And uh, for the sake of, of time, they're basically going to say, all right, um, that's all done Just immediately. Normally in real life, you would, you would get your wings and stuff moving. They do that on launch. Uh, but they don't do it on orbit because these missions tend to be hours long and, and by this point you just want to be done, right? So I accidentally threw an error there, item 38, execute, there we go. So so they give you the grace of not having to sit through that because you already seen it in launch, right? Why do you need to see it again? And now we're going to uh, close off our valves for the forward RCS which is done on the overhead right panel, which is actually, I believe, called overhead. Yeah, overhead right. There we go. I don't know why this one's spring-loaded, but it is. And now we're going to move to Ops 304. Ops three, zero, you can see we are no longer running uh, dump stuff, and we are seeing our... Um, Free fall data, we're seeing our, our vectored flight plan, again in massive quotes, and we're going to switch the system to local vertical local horizon. And these two are about the same, we'll just go for this one because we've been using right a lot, but we're just going to start. Uh, Orbit should be commencing very shortly. Yep, as you can see, our Laplace is just shot up. So if we go external, uh, you can see that we're now pointed straight up, and aft RCS will be firing soon. Yep, you can see aft RCS is firing, and that's basically going to keep us from tipping over back or uh, backwards during this process. And we're just going to confirm that these two are set to auto, which they are. So loss of communications is going to happen. I apologize if you can hear any of the banging from the construction. Welcome to living in a city. Yep, yeah, this is our, our horizontal uh, situation. This is our entry trajectory. And you can see flames are rolling up the windows. Good stuff. There you go. Range is dropping. Altitude is dropping. And very shortly the flames will stop rolling off. Big fireball. It's actually plasma, but... Here you can see we're starting to move. We're following the lines now. They're just calling out a, uh, you know, loss of communication should be done now. Here's our azimuth, range, and altitude. So you can see that range is only taken into consideration really after 
deorbit's done. I'm pretty sure we didn't see range start to change until then. This is our, our range to landing site. It's not even our, our down range, actually. But you can see, we're going to start doing some roll reversals. And uh, that's going to do the funnies on our entry trajectory. And uh, it does look kind of kind of janky too and and you really go like all the way sideways it's it's insane but here we go we're going to activate thermal control system so we're going to scoop up some freon while we are in the atmosphere Power up our boilers and our TVCs. Boilers are already on. They just want us to check, I guess. Oh, oh yeah, NH3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's for the um, gimbals. You see, our um, aft rudder is also our speed brake. couple more seconds of, of looking at this and we'll cut a little time watch that go by all right so now we we got to enable the uh, the probes yeah now is where it's gonna get a little tricky because I have to try and land this thing while getting a good view of the computers so preemptively I'm gonna set the microwave landing system to the proper landing channel and radar altimeters. Uh, now we're going to just preemptively turn on the HUD and make it nice and bright so I can see it without clicking into uh, this window. Go into class. Have fun. See our roll reversals are nearing completion. And there we go. Once we get down enough, yep, they're gonna have a switch over to manual. <laughs> and this is where the fun part begins. All right. Let's just not touch. Go and start with that landing. So you can see, through most of the descent, our horizontal situation is going to be slightly off, but that's okay. And then, yeah, I apologize if, if you hear me uh, brush up against my microphone right now, because I'm flying this with number pad keys, so... Uh, broke college student does not have the uh, joy of, of a... Um, joystick. Space Shuttle is really nice though. It has auto trim. Here I can show you that. We're going to push the up key. We're going to let go. You'll see it just drop a little bit and click right into place. Auto trim is very nice. See, our horizontal situation is way off, so let's take us left a little bit. And very soon, we're going to dump aft RCS fuselage, and we're just going to be gliding. It's going to be nice. A winter jacket? Um, it's 46. Do you even need a winter jacket? Get a sweatshirt. Yeah, that's hot out. Oh, yeah, it will be cold. Maybe not wear your jacket right away, but like tie it around your waist or something. But there we go. After RCS fuselage dump, so now we're just uh, rolling out uh, with our aft rudder. Or not rolling, uh, yawing out with our aft rudder. I hope this is a good enough like representation of the 
data on the computers. I know you can't particularly see it too well, but... Y'all, they need to stop beeping so much. <laughs> Construction down here is insane. Oh, that's rough. Another bottle? You have three gallons. I see. Alright. Almost to the heading alignment circle. And here we go. Time for the fun part. An airplane would probably not survive this kind of bank at this speed. Airplanes can do this bank, just not as fast as we are doing it. Uh, we're going through this bank insanely fast. You can see, look at our horizontal situation. Kind of looping around that curve there. That is an extremely fast rate to be going. As you can see, it's pretty fast. Flatten out a little bit. Discovery, you're looking good. Twenty-three thousand feet, twenty-two thousand feet. Yeah, the game's nice. It gives you this kind of view, which is a, a lot easier to to manage. But because the whole point of this is to show you the computer. Here we go. Here's our audit to ninety. Uh, it's our runway in sight. Yep. Copy that. Audit to ninety. Runway is almost in sight. Time to start panicking a little bit. <laughs> I've never done this in, in this kind of view before. So. Ceiling at nine. There we go. Start ceiling. Field in sight and drop. And this is where I'm going to switch views. I apologize, but this this requires precision right here. In real life, this would probably be easier to see. There we go. That's better. Set up to deploy the landing gear. Yep, you can see this stuff is basically going to stay the same through the entire process now. So we'll keep it in this view now. Gear down. Landing gear is down and locked. One hundred. Seven. Sixty. Forty. Twenty. Flare. Touchdown. 
Wait on nose wheel. Parachutes out. <laughs> or not wait on nose wheel. There we go. Wait on nose wheel. Beautiful. And it is uh, showing its 2007-ness right now, but my god, does the space shuttle actually look beautiful compared to everything else. <laughs> Alright, shoot, release. And there you go. That's all she wrote. Make sure we're not running off the runway, because they'll kill us for that. <laughs> Uh, one of the advancements in the old, um, in the um, newer programs is an addition of a carbon break. I am pushing the carbon break key, but it is not uh, working, so we're flying an old enough craft that we don't have a carbon break. That's nice. And just for the funny XD moments. Main bus undervolt. I'm surprised the uh, master alarm is not blaring the actual alarm. It did a beep. Maybe that's because we're already on the ground. There we can. Make sure that we're not running off the runway. <laughs> And stop. There we go. That's all she wrote. <laughs> 